having a massive coronary. Okay, we're going to take him to the hospital. Oh, Pop. Please do not call me Pop. Pop is for champagne and soda water. I am your friend. And alas, your father, I am not Pop. Everything is going to be all right, Jenny. Don't call me Jenny. Please. You want to count to three? One, two, three. We got it, Pop. Look, from all those letters we wrote, all those million interviews, I'm appointed a special assistant trainee for the Honorable Robert DeSalva, District Attorney for the County of New York. I'm one of 278. But I'm one. Paul. Oh. And after that, I'm coming home and practice law with you. Parker and Parker. I see that you got your name first. We won our bet, Pop. We didn't cheat anyone. We kept the rules. Jenny. Jenny. Yes, Pop. I want to rest next to your mother. Don't forget. Not for a hundred years. Keep the rules, Jenny. I know they're a pain sometimes, but they're all I have to leave you. Don't need anything but you, Bob. I love the Lord. Practice it well, Jenny. It's the only thing between us and the Furies. Hurry! <laughs> for the many security checks you've all suffered this morning. But the safety of the witness, Carl Stell, and the sanctity of the people's case against Antonio Grinelli is, at this moment, the most important project for the office of the District Attorney of New York County. Well said, Mr. DeSalva. Oh, shut up, Ben. <laughs> what the hell do you think this is, a rehearsal for a wedding? Please excuse me, sir. It's the most important day of my life, and I fouled it all up. I got the number nine crosstown mixed up with the number six, and instead of being on the west side, I ended up on the... No, Jennifer no. Jennifer Parker, trainee assistant. I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I... Please don't whine, Miss Parker. Take a seat. Thank you. So welcome to the district attorney's office. Maybe some of you will learn something. Now, the courtroom is where the action is. Don't hang from the stars yet. Because you people, 
We'll be living in a world made up of subpoenas, research mainly trivial, law libraries, and still more law libraries. Life in the courtroom is an ultimate, not a beginning. But half a dozen of you may run errands and do other thunderous duties during the Grinelli trial. Oh, dear God. She's not only late, she's earnest. <laughs> All right, Ben. Pick five more for me. Assign them and swear everyone in. And God save the people of the state of New York. <laughs> The decade is about to begin this morning. I'm reporting from the tombs where Carl Stell, whom the press calls the Singing Canary, is being brought to testify against Antonio Grinelli, the grand master of organized crime. Stell's testimony is the foundation of the state's case against Grinelli. The readiness of Stell to testify against his former employer is a major triumph for District Attorney Robert DeSalva, who promises double and triple the normal security precautions to protect the witness. Now, Mr. Stell. What other business are you aware of that Antonio Grinelli was involved with besides loan sharking? You name it. Like on the docks, uh, Mr. Grinelli kind of has a major vote with the union. Likewise, the garment industry. Uh, Mr. Grinelli is also into uh, gambling, <laughs> record piracy, linen supplies. Very industrious man. <laughs> Now, Mr. Stell, what happened the evening Antonio Grinelli told you he wanted the Ramos brothers killed? Objection. Overruled. You may answer the question, Mr. Stell. Mr. Grinelli tells me to invite the boys, Eddie and Albert Ramos, to a little party. I'm going in another direction. Mr. Grinelli done for a long time, a Michael. A long time ago. Talk a little business down at the Pelican. That's a very private beach club. What happened then? I, uh, I picked Eddie and Albert up and drove him down to the parking lot. Mr. Uh, Mr. Grinelli was there, like, like he was waiting. When the boys, when the boys got out of the car, they, uh, they started to call Mr. Grinelli uh, an old man, a, a sick old man. Mr. Grinelli grabbed my gun. I swear he hadn't done any piecework in 40 years. He went crazy. He cut them in half. You witnessed the defendant, Antonio Grinelli, shoot to death in cold blood Objection. two human beings Your because Honor. they had withheld Objection. money from him. Your Honor, he's, he's trying to inflame the jury. Sustain. Come here, Mr. DeSalva and Mr. Moretti. Knock it off, Bobby. Don't try that in my courtroom again. You want on for Senator? Do it on your own time. A witness for cross-examination. Your Honor, it's now almost noon. I prefer not to have my cross-examination interrupted. May I request that the court recess for lunch now, and I'll cross-examine this afternoon. All right. This court stands adjourned until 2 o'clock. I want to get to the lunch right now. Mr. DeSalva, I want you to give this to Carl Stell. Already he's going to try and tear his testimony apart after lunch. And the chief wants to make sure Stell's on top of these dates. I'm delighted he remembered me. You were late. That he remembers. <laughs> Mr. DeSalvo would like you to look this over, Mr. Stell. 
Don't stare at me like that, lady. I ain't no corpse. paid you to give that package to Carl Stell? Paid me? Nobody paid me. You just walked up to my witness and delivered this. One of your staff gave... Which one of my staff? Your secretary, May Turpin. The nice Client lady is May Turpin. for you. No. May Turpin has been with the DA's office for over 20 years. How much were you paid? Are you accusing me accusing of... Accusing Lady, I haven't even started with you. By the time you get out of prison, you'll be too old to enjoy that money. Too old to breathe, to eat, too old to live. I receive no money. I have absolutely no knowledge of... I I'm being set up. Yeah, excuse me, Your Honor, but this intramural bickering within the DA's office, it's getting us nowhere. Mr. Grinelli should not be kept hanging around the courtroom. Bobby, is Stell still willing to be cross-examined? Cross-examined? <laughs> I doubt I'll leave an answer to his name. If I can't cross-examine the prosecution's chief witness, Your Honor, I'd like to move for a mistrial. Did you tell Stell he can be held in contempt? Stell is more scared of them than he is of us. Can't we wait for May Turpin? She'll clear up everything. If May Turpin climbs to the top of the building now naked and sings Melancholy Baby, it won't change the fact that Stell won't let me cross-examine him. I'm afraid this court has no alternative but to grant the defense's request and declare a mistrial. Thank you, Your Honor. I want this. Held for obstructing justice, for tampering with a witness in a capital case, for conspiracy. Wait, you can't prove a single one of those charges. Just you wait. No, not one. Miss Parker, I'm going to request that the appellate division undertake an investigation. And if it feels the circumstances warrant it, to begin disbarment proceedings against you. Your Honor, I... I would suggest you get a lawyer, Miss Parker. A number of bombshells exploded this afternoon and all over the Grinelli murder trial, so cunningly crafted by Manhattan's exuberant DA Robert DeSalva, rumored to have ambitions for the United States Senate. The people's case against Antonio Grinelli was destroyed by the criminal actions of a former employee in my office named Jennifer Parker. <sighs> You louse. You're hanging me without even a hearing. A further macabre incident occurred when May Turpin, a secretary in the DA's office, accused by Jennifer Parker as the person who gave her the frighteningly symbolic canary, was killed by a truck while returning from lunch to the criminal courthouse. The driver of the truck claimed that the woman walked in front of the truck. Two witnesses corroborated his story. The driver was not held. My only witness. God help. God help me. This is a creepy town. Oh, Bob. I'm so scared. Yes, did you? Yes, our executive committee looked over your resume very carefully. I wouldn't require a lot. You're quite a public figure, aren't you? I'm not disbarred yet. Sorry. Yeah. You're dripping. Adam, dear friend, partner, beloved.
beloved brother-in-law. You want me to run for the Senate? Of course we do. If the Salva holds on to his party leaders and gets their nomination, our leaders would be foolish not to turn to you, a brilliant lawyer, distinguished member of the bar. I have done a lot of joining. Two years, the United States Attorney's Office, war hero, decorated in Vietnam. Please, Seth, you're making my teeth hurt. <laughs> I'm not going to crucify this Jennifer Parker person to win an election. You are leading the investigation of her. An investigation, not a lynch mob. The Salva's blaming her for all the world's ills. Including the plague and acid rain. <laughs> Nail her, Adam. Finish the lady. It's worth at least a quarter of a million votes. And 30 pieces of silver? You'll do the right thing. I guess I always do the right thing. Elvin Halleck, attorney at law. This is Crespus. No, no. I didn't make out your bill. No, no, no. Look, look, look Mr. Halleck's on the phone. He's the one you got to talk to. No, I don't know what you should have been charged. Bills were, I mean, wills vary with the... Well, I think you talk money, too. You sure you want to work here? I'd like to work anywhere. Get me Leo Rubin. Mr. Halleck, I sent you my resume. Oh, great. Another unemployed lawyer. You look familiar. Oh, well. <laughs> it isn't true. You're her. The canary girl. Bob DeSalva's folly. <laughs> you want a job? You've been to a hundred places already. I don't need a super salary. I can work late. I have all kinds of credentials. Got one from Bob DeSalva? <laughs> you put a great effort in this, Mike. Uh, there's too much legit money to be made today without screwing around on nervous rackets. Muscles in the multinational corporations. The key to all that's banks. One bank in Liechtenstein. Takes over a sweet little bank in Trenton. In Trenton, we pick up other banks. Okay. Home run is ownership in Europe. You see the figures. I may be getting old, Michael, but. Huh? I can read. I can still think. Huh? Hmm? Mm -hmm. You're using our laundered money to buy more money, eh? To buy the banks, eh? Buy the world. Yeah, a fat hunk of it. Right? You want us to phase out the loan sharking, the numbers, the unions, so we get out of Vegas, Atlantic City, we even sell off our narcotics, eh? It's powder keg money. It'll blow up in our faces one day. Please don't be nostalgic. Looking back, it's the raging hookers. Those pimps have walked away. People get ideas. I see their leaders get old. They wanna, they wanna hurry them along. They 
got to try my side. I'm a pussy guy. You? You're a cobra. But you're my cobra. Salute. Yes? I'm an attorney. So, you're the Adam Warner of Needham, Finch, Pearson, Warner, a most prestigious firm. May I come in? You people go back as far as... Wigs and snuff. I applied to your firm personally. I drafted my resume personally. I took a subway. Personally? I find nothing remotely amusing about any of this. No, you're right, there isn't. Miss Parker, I think I have you at some disadvantage. You sure do. I can wait until you change. No, no, you can't. Miss Parker, I'm a member of the disciplinary committee of the New York Bar Association. I've been assigned to... Slice me open like third-class mail? The door is here. No, better still, the window's over there. Sir, please get out of here. I swear, I'm all out of blood. Robert DeSalva can't get you indicted on any criminal counts at this point. But he does want you disbarred. I'm asking you to leave, Mr. Warner. Mr. Warner, please don't come in. Now I've asked you to leave three times. If you don't, I'm going down the hall. Borrow a ladder from a friend, climb up as far as I can, and punch you in the face. Please don't do that. I'm essentially a nice man. You're a hatchet man. I'm only the person who finds and reports. I've been going through your life for four days now. That's five too many. Dinner? No. With cordiality? Same answer. And lots of questions. Objective questions. I'm going to say yes, because I'm very hungry for food and vindication. I can promise you food. Congratulate you on my mistrial. I won't try you again. No. There's that girl, what's her name? Um, for Jennifer Parker? Ah. Does she suspect you set her up? No. That was a Thomas Colfax contribution. He's a maestro at such matters. That lady we owned on the DA staff. Nate Turpin. Any problems? No. Colfax tells me that was a real accident. Of course. You know, that Carstell was an animal. It was not my contracts. There was a hundred contracts out on Stell. So, a man was killed by acclamation. I should have put a contract out on him. Perhaps I am good. Yes, sir. Please don't worry. I've got my two best operatives working on your case. 
I'm sure we'll have news of your husband any day now. Uh, Mrs. Desser, I'm uh, going to have to ask you for a little bit more expense money. Uh, I mean, I could care less when you pay, but uh, it is a state law, and uh, I'm liable to lose my license. Uh, no, no, don't mail it. Uh, the mails are terrible. Uh, listen, I'm supposed to be in your neighborhood. Just let me check my calendar here. Uh, ah, this afternoon, as it turns out, on a charity case. Well, one does one's bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'll be by. I'll see you this afternoon. That's it. Bye-bye. Hi. Hi. I'm Kenneth Bailey. What can I do for you this morning? I came about your ad. Your ace investigations? That's right. Come in. What's your scam? I'm an attorney. And you want to rent office space here? I want to go into business for myself. I have to go into business for myself. Your rent will be $90 a month. Uh, I could buy this building for $90. Well, uh, maybe we can uh, work out a deal. 50 And then when your business gets rolling, we'll talk about an increase. I'll take it. Uh, I'll need the $50 up front. Can't. You can't. I have survival money, that's all. But I know I can handle it. Carry me for a month or so. I'll pay you the full $90 once I get going. How about 40 A paltry 40 bucks, Counselor. Sorry, I can't handle it. For now. Wait a minute. You ever serve summonses? Stinks. But a pretty lady has an edge. They're less apt to break your legs. Sounds wonderful. I can get you some summons work. But you'll have to pay me the rent from the first dollar. Understood? Done. We're on our way, Mr. Bailey. Don't get excited. We're not partners. Oh, by the way, we split the fees. You recognize me, too. I do watch TV. And you still want me here? I'm desperate, too, lady. I'll be back. Do you like roses? What are the longest stem roses in the entire world? Do they have thorns? I suppose so. Then I'd suggest you take them one by one. You're rough. Strangle any canaries lately. to call a cop? Oh, would you like to witness a cop being beaten up? You would, wouldn't you? Anything to impress you? You think that would impress me? I didn't set you up. You should take these flowers. Why? I think you received one of the bummest raps I've ever seen or heard of. People think you bought me. Well, you and I know better, don't we? I can't regret it saved my client from a, a legal lynching. A lynching? What would you call it? Mr. Grinelli was convicted by the press and the public and the media long before he was even indicted, and I resent that. I resent the salvo using this trial to jack himself into politics, too. I hate lynch mobs. And I hate criminals. And be a jailer, I'm not a lawyer. We've got a long way to go together, Counselor. I think the governor will support your nomination. 
He hates my guts, Charlie. But he'd rather see you in the Senate. Where I can't bother some of his people. Still, Charlie, I don't know. Listen, Bob, you owe it to the decent Italian Americans of this city. Built like Grinelli, grab the headlines, and the rest of your people take the rap. Let's put it right. You want me to make my name more Italian? <laughs> now, your face and character are good enough. I think Adam Warner is a cinch to get the nomination on the other side. He'll be a strong opponent. If Warner can nail Jennifer Parker, I'll vote for myself. Do you hate the lady that much? More. Today, remember? Where's my office? Where my summons is? Where the hell is my life? Stop it! No, you don't! Come on! No, you don't. I'm gonna sober you up, understand? We're going to get our office sorted out, understand? We are going to be in business. Listen to me, partner. Whatever's above you is irrelevant. And nobody insists that you be happy. Happiness is a candy word. It's sober, clean, and orderly you can be. I listen to you, Oh, you're good. You're a good baker. Let's get you to fake living for a while, okay? Where's the coffee? Drunks always have coffee around. to do around here. You're very strong. Just desperate. You're astonishingly beautiful. Thank you, Ken. I think I want to die. Later. You can die later. For Mr. Moretti. Thank you. Now, please return the rest to Mr. Moretti and tell him I'm allergic to roses. His roses. Mr. Moretti has a case for you. He what? Well, he says you haven't been disbarred yet, and he has a case for you. Who's the client? His name is Mulva. Cyril Mulva. Cyril Mulva? He's no one. There's 500 up front, and there's 800 to follow. Mulva. Cyril Mulva is a Brooklyn loan shark who specializes in taking over small unions. He's entitled to a lawyer. You tell Mr. Moretti I'm a lawyer, not a fixer. You tell Mr. Moretti what's left of me. He's not for sale. Bravo! Bravo! Don't do that. Mr. Moretti is a fine man. Rabinowitz summons. How did you tag old Rabinowitz? He's pretty agile. I cornered him in the men's room at the old Flemish bar. The men's room? Well, he was ducking me all day. I got sore. You're getting pretty good at this. Have to be. I may never practice law again. Adam Warner's trying to be fair, but I did deliver that damn canary. Oh, one more week until the decision. One more joyous week. 
You see a lot of Warner? I've answered a lot of his questions. He's a nice enough guy. And desperate to be senator. He seems ambivalent about that. A kindly perception. <laughs> You like Warner, don't you? Guess so. Even if his committee recommends disbarment? I believe I'd want to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> Ken, what am I going to do if they disbar me? What? Don't know. I'm weak on survival. <laughs> Would Madam like to have an aperitif while you're waiting? I'd like three right now. But if I better not. I see. Hello, Sam. A bottle of Dom Perignon 75. Iced and waiting, sir. Champagne? Does that... Parker, you are free and clear. You are judged innocent of all accusations of wrongdoing. Oh, boy! <laughs> I would have vehemently recommended disbarment if the evidence was there, but it wasn't. It's fine. By the way, you look lovely. Thank you. To Jennifer Parker, attorney at law, now and forever. Numb and wonderful. You had real doubts about me at the beginning, didn't you? Yes. Salva is going to have a seizure. Pity. My being vindicated, will it hurt your campaign? I mean, I'm still a, a heavy in the public's eye. The public's eye, Jennifer, blinks and looks elsewhere. It's a blessing for politicians. We have no children. My wife is really better with adults, successful adults. Funny thing, our marriage is dead. The desire is still quite strong. Imagine feeling guilty about one's own wife. My God, marriage can be. I think, Mr. Warner, you're probably sitting on a volcano. Do you have any fun? No. <laughs> I mean, not in the convulsive sense. I don't roar with laughter or howl at a ball game. No. Shiver over a piece of music or go bananas over a work of art. And I don't like to kill fish or wound deer. Yeah. <laughs> I sort of conduct a rap session, storefront style with some veterans from Nam, but you can't really call that fun. That seems like a strange enterprise for rich folks. No, oh, I... that's all right. Some of us uh, rich folks were the real losers in Nam. Why? Well, we had more to lose. We really believed. Will you campaign for the Senate on believing? No. <laughs> no, I'll campaign like everyone else. And that is? That is that the past is not relevant and that the, that the future is bright. May I see you again? Why the hell can't I look at you superficially and be bored?
Now you're a locksmith. Whatever. This is all wasted, you know. I don't think so. I don't want you in my home, Mr. Moretti. Oh. Then I don't want to be here. This is too easy. What's next? Well, since privacy seems to frighten you, why don't we try a public place next with lots of people and lots of safety? No. Then I'm afraid there'll be more roses. You said a public place, and that'll be that? If you decide. The ranger's policeman. Guys are no Out there, he'd get killed. No. Every team has a policeman. It's a player who's sitting just as an enforcer. I see, an enforcer. Yeah, the player is sitting by the coach, and his players are getting roughed up. In goes the policeman, and it uh, generally it uh, tends to so roughly of the team. So why are they fighting? Both teams send in their policemen. Come on, come on, kill him! Rangers, bunch of sissies! Just ignore him, ignore him, on, ignore him. He just wants the attention. Beautiful. I see nothing beautiful. No, no, you will. You gotta stop thinking. It's not a mental experience. It's for your body. Believe me, you got the appetite for this. Come on, come on, get the ball. Now you can live! Come Hockey, on, come on, come on. Bring out the best in people. Come up, go from back to Staten Island. All right! <laughs> Hockey seems to make people hungry, doesn't it? All sports do. Excuse me? Excuse me? I don't know. I tend to get hungry after sex. Sex? Well, stimulation. It uh, stimulates. Uh, hey, back of the line, Charlie. Yeah, well, if I uh, see Charlie, I'll tell him. No, no, back of the line, that's all. Hey, why don't you go? Oh! Oh! oh. I think your friend's sick. You want to be with your hot dog? You just hit that man. Give me two hot dogs, two beers, have the end of the sauerkraut all the way around on a double order of French fries. You just hit that man. That thing a man? Do I have to explain the meaning of this word to you? Like you just did to that gentleman? Whatever. Yes? Oh, Ken, for Pete's sakes, I'm still sleeping. What? Say that sentence again. Client? C-L-I-E-N-T? I'm there already. A client! No money. Afraid not? I'm afraid not. You got me down here at dawn for a case with no money. It's a case. Ken, Father Ryan, rich lawyers do charity work. Super rich lawyers do conscience law. Poor lawyers, no, strike that. Impoverished lawyers do not work for impoverished clients. Well, you're not impoverished. We're serving a lot of summonses. Ken counts like an optimist. In his world, there is only income, no expenses. Well, Ken is Irish. Abraham Wilson is the son of one of our parishioners. His lawyer withdrew from the case yesterday. You can get a lot of exposure on this one, Jan. Exposure I've had. Abraham is finishing 10 years at Sing Sing for armed robbery. A few months ago, he killed a fellow prisoner named Raymond Thorpe. They're going to try him for murder. They intend to go for the death penalty. They claim he beat the man to death. Do you know if there were any witnesses? I'm afraid so. How many? Oh, about a hundred. It happened in the prison yard. <laughs> oh, terrific. Now, just what is it you want me to do for no money? Help Abraham. A thrown away mistake. A miserable, unreachable misanthrope. But still a child of God. God seems to have lost his name and address, Father.
My name is Jennifer Parker. I'm an attorney. Can you see me? Are He's you... been in solitary confinement. Father Ryan asked me to see you. That hunky do better. Come sit down. Is there anything you need here, Mr. Wilson? Yeah. You interested? Do you want to tell me what happened? Hey, you're looking for my life story, you got to pay me for it. I'm afraid there's nothing I can do to help you unless you help me. I promised Father Ryan I would at least come and talk to you. That's mighty white of you, sweetheart. Very white. You sure you won't change your mind about us? I got great credentials. Do you hate everybody? Tell you what, doll. You crawl into my skin. I'll crawl into yours then. You and me will rap about hate. We'll rap about hate as long as we live. Do you want to tell me your side of the story, Abraham? I killed a hunk of slime. Why did you kill him? What difference? Maybe your life. He was uh, coming at me with this chunk of hardware. Please don't try and con me. Prisoners don't walk around with chunks of hardware. Get the hell out of here, lady. I didn't send for you. And don't come around here and bother me no more, here. Yeah? I'm a busy man. I'm busy, yeah? No souvenirs here, lady. This is real. This is black. This is real. Yes, Dave. Yeah, right. Yeah, I understand. Hey, I'll take care of it this afternoon. Tell me, could a convict in here get possession of a deadly weapon? Miss Parker, there are 1,240 convicts in this place. And some of them are men of great ingenuity. Hmm. Any examples of this supposed ingenuity? I think we have some samples in the goodie box. Could I take a look at the goodie box? All right. Hopefully not the jurors. Jennifer. This was not his case. He took it himself. He wants another shot at me. You won't be facing any kid assistant DA with acne and moist palms. You'll be facing me, Parker. I'm gonna have your eyes, ears, nose, and throat. I'm gonna ram your face into the law, Parker. The law. Remember the law. It doesn't frighten me. If you thought you were white before, lady, take a look at yourself now. What's this? Who do you think sent it? Anybody.
Abraham Wilson has confessed to the murder of a fellow inmate in the prison yard, Raymond thought. But even if he had not confessed, we have witnesses, more than a hundred witnesses, who saw Abraham Wilson murder that defenseless man in cold blood. Cold blood. Without the excuse of emotions or passions. Cold blood. Every man has the right to protect his own life. If Abraham Wilson had not acted exactly as he did, he would be dead. I ask each of you to remember one thing. Under the law of this state, the prosecution must prove beyond any reasonable doubt that the act of killing was not committed in self-defense. Self-defense. Your Honor, would you please direct the defendant to rise? Does counsel for the defense have any objection? No, Your Honor. Will the defendant please rise? There's a court clerk here, Mr. Galen, who is five feet, seven inches tall. The exact height of the murdered man, Raymond Thorpe. Mr. Galen? Would you please step forward and stand next to the defendant? Now, would you both please turn and face the jury? Self-defense. There have been killings in prison before this case, have there not, Warden Patterson? Well, when you lock up hundreds of violent men together in an artificial environment, they are bound to generate a great deal of hostility. Has self-defense ever been a motive in any of those prison killings? Sometimes, yes. So, based on your vast experience, it is entirely possible, is it not, that Abraham Wilson was actually defending his own life I when he killed him. I ask if it's possible, possible yes or no. Well, it is highly unlikely. Your Honor, would you please direct the witness to answer the question? The witness will answer the question. Yes. Thank you. If the court please, I have subpoenaed from the witness some material I would like to present as Exhibit A. What is it? It is called a goodie box. Did you say a goodie box? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, just what's in it, Miss Parker? Weapons. Weapons that were made in Sing Sing by the prisoners Objection. for the purpose I'm of showing... Make allowances for the inexperience of my colleague, Your Honor. But there is no evidence to link anything in this so-called goodie box to the case being tried before this court. This box proves This box proves nothing. The state objects to the introduction of this exhibit as immaterial and irrelevant. Mm. Objection sustained. Your Honor, the ground has been prepared for introducing this evidence. The district attorney prepared it himself. What? I never allowed any statements... Would the court stenographer please read the statement beginning with more than a hundred witnesses who saw Abraham Wilson... Your Honor, are you going to allow this to be... More than a hundred witnesses who saw Abraham Wilson murder that defenseless man in cold blood without the... That's enough, thank you. Those are your words, sir. More than a hundred witnesses who saw Abraham Wilson murder that defenseless man in cold blood. The key word, Your Honor, is defenseless. Mr. DeSalva has left an open door for us to pursue the fact that the victim might not have been defenseless, that he might, in fact, have had a weapon. Whatever is brought up in the direct is admissible in the cross. I believe Miss Parker has a point. You did leave the door open, you know. But only in the narrowest sense. The court will allow the evidence to be entered as Exhibit A. Thank you. Relax. She's won nothing, really. Ladies and gentlemen, for days now, you have been hearing how Abraham Wilson wantonly attacked Raymond Thorpe, who stood only five feet, seven inches tall. I believe with total conviction, the only motive that justifies killing someone is a man fighting to protect his own life. 
You have heard Howard Patterson testify that murders have occurred in prison, that convicts do fashion deadly weapons. So it was possible that Raymond Thorpe was armed with such a weapon. It was possible that he was attacking the defendant and the defendant, trying to protect himself, was forced to kill him in self-defense. When I first looked into this box, I could not believe what I saw. You too may find it hard to believe. But I ask you to remember that this box was brought here by the assistant warden of Sing Sing Prison. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a collection of confiscated weapons secretly made by Abraham Wilson's fellow prisoners. No argument, thank you. Objection! Your Honor, I protest this tawdry theatrical display. It's behavior unbecoming a member of the bar. Your Honor! Objection! I protest... Mr. Wilson, did you kill Raymond Thorpe? Yes, ma'am. Would you tell the court why? He's going to kill me. Is this the weapon that Raymond Thorpe threatened you with? Yes, ma'am. And when he came at you armed with this, you were forced to kill him in order to save your own life? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Your witness. <laughs> Raymond Thorpe attempted to kill you with this? Yes. Doesn't look very lethal at all. It looks to me like a tin pair of tongs. Even if the deceased had been able to hit you over the head with this, it might have caused a small bump. So exactly what is this? because I'm practicing law again because of you. Well, I haven't disturbed you, have I? A drink? That sounds special. Uh, of course. How do I feel? Pow! <laughs> it's a steal. We get two glasses of wine and a sale around Manhattan. How much is the steal? 35 bucks a piece. They also throw in some cheese. Cheese? Oh, they're gonna lose money on me. <laughs> <laughs> ah, thank you. Excuse me, sir. Aren't you the man that's running for, He's uh... running for the United States Senate. Yeah, sure. You're Warner. I you my wife's all for you. And you? I haven't made up my mind. Well, when you do, vote early and often. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations again, Counselor. Thank you. Lovely place to celebrate. Do you have any problems in being seen publicly with me? Well, not as long as it stays public. Being seen with an astonishingly beautiful woman never hurt a politician. <laughs> oh, boy. Astonishingly beautiful? It's too flowery? No, not at all. My partner, Ken, Kenneth Bailey, mm. calls me all kinds of outrageous things. <laughs> but he's Irish. 
He sure is. I like him. You know Ken? Oh, yes. Yes, we used to use him a lot. He had good grades in law school, but he never took the bar. A dedicated researcher. He told marvelously droll stories, particularly when... Uh... <laughs> oh, it's all right. I know about the drinking. But I think he's stopped for good. Well, I hope so. His wife was dedicated to keeping him off the sauce. Ken was married? Oh, yes. To a uh, lovely, fragile redhead named Nancy. I think she was even more vulnerable than Ken and desperately in love with him. Go on, Adam. You have a lovely person in Ken. Adam, I'm not asking you to gossip, but it is important to me. Well, she came home one afternoon. She'd been visiting her mother in Teaneck. She came home earlier than anticipated. Him. Naturally, there he was in bed with another woman. There was a man in the bed, and three days later, Nancy killed herself. Yes, he's still waiting for the hyenas to come down from the hills. We all wait in the dark, one way or the other. One way or the other. Something wrong? Of course not. You've been glancing at me. Not at you, at us. I mean, all of us. Oh, I see. You sure you weren't looking at me? Of course not. <laughs> What's wrong? I was staring at you. Oh, you make me anxious. Anxious? An expression from home. Anxious meaning... <laughs> anxious. She can see you tomorrow about 10.30. Uh, I'll try to make that, Mr. Fabricant. If I'm interested, I'll give you a call. Hold on. Of course you're interested. Fabricant's big. He's only slightly dishonest. Lays off a lot of steady trial work. Steady trial work? Jenny. Right there. I'd be delighted to see you. Yes, Mrs. Jovelon. Right. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yes. We'll see you about 12 then, okay? All right. Well, of course she knows about negligence law. My partner knows everything. Oh, hold on. Go easy. We want a case, not a country. <laughs> yes? Yes. Okay, see you then. Bye-bye. Parker and Bailey. You got big plans for the weekend? <laughs> Not big. Already? He's much too real for you, Jennifer. Real? Real. As in don't. Don't worry, Ken. My weekend is going to be made up of lots of rest, and on Sunday, I'm going to hear some Vietnam vets rap a little. On a Sunday? They worked on Sundays. True. Good night. See you later. Hey. Thank you. For what? For helping me with the Wilson case.
way if I did the rapid. No. <laughs> and now this dumb, <laughs> they throw a couple of dollars at a sewer inspector. Fountain of plenty to come bubbling up. Damn it! I didn't come in and listen to a lot of morons. Hey, it cost me a buck fifty, man, to come and rap with you oh, children. Yeah. Oh, now listen, oh, pals. Oh, yeah. Listen, pals, we're spinning our wheels if we come down here and shove each other around. Hey, stop it, Senator. I'm no senator yet. Well, you'll make it. You guys always do that. Oh, I sure hope so, but I'm not campaigning here. I'm here. You're here to work out some problems. You, you gotta have a life before you have problems. Right, right. I agree. It stinks. We had a miserable war. We had a miserable homecoming. You made points, Charlie. We got Shaft. Right. 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 Shaft. Is. That's why we're here. Hey, 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 hey. They're shutting us out. Don't you understand? We're worse than dead men. We're ghosts. We everything that went wrong. Shepherd. Yeah. Yeah. yeah! He leads me to me lie. Yeah. He instructed me to rape and pillage him. Yeah. Yeah. He restored it down. Down. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be all right. Go on home. I'll see you next week. All right, fellas. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. You're safe now, Jimmy. I promise you. It's all right, Jimmy. I should have kept you at the hospital a while longer. You'll go home now, then a visit to the doctor. Dr. Wilde is a good guy. He likes you. And maybe we'll take a drive up the old Storm King Highway. Yeah? Yeah? Hudson Scott and Snow Sweet now. Sweet. If you're biting all the way upstream up near Poughkeepsie. Well, that's a real fair amount. Some kids are always getting lost up there. Why do men dress so quickly and women stay in bed? I think it's because we want to strut around afterwards. Strutting is better with clothes on. I want to strut too, Adam. Can I borrow your sweater? It's not to keep. It costs 250 bucks. 250 bucks for a man's sweater? How about 250 bucks for a woman's sweater? Very reasonable. Listen. Listen to what? A billion things. I'm so glad we drove out here, Adam. Mm. Found our inn. It's all right. I'm not expecting you to charge about sorting out your affairs, moving your life around to make room for me. I expect nothing except you. Coffee, Michael? No. Cigar, Mike? No, thank you. Give them up? Yeah. 
You used to enjoy your good Havana. I did. Health? Futures. You don't think that Liechtenstein Trenton bank deal can work? You should have come to see me with your outrageous ideas. All you I come to see with conventional ideas. Dreams I go to see Mr. Grinelli. You know, Mr. Grinelli is an after hours friend, Thomas. We discuss life, girls, football. And changing the whole operation. Dreams, Thomas. Busy dreams. Michael, remember. I'm still the family counselor. I remember. And you'll please remember to clear things with me. I'll remember. Getting anywhere with the Parker girl? Well, I've seen the lady once since the trial. Twice. Well, she might be useful to the organization. Always business, eh, hey, Michael? Thomas, do I frighten you? Not now, Michael. Or maybe someday? Maybe later. Wait till you see it, Adam. Here it is. And a fireplace. Although not countryish, it can throw off a lot of heat. So can you. You make me anxious. I intend to. In the kitchen. It starts to cook before I get home. It wants to prepare wonderful dishes for us. You're the only wonderful dish I want. Adam, it's only noon. Only noon? You make us sound like an old married couple. I wish we were an old married couple. I'm sorry, Adam. I didn't mean to say oh, that. Remember, Miss Parker, I adore you. You're a magical person. Some of it has rubbed off on a very grateful. Tell him. Want a drink? I'm so lucky. Give you so little. Better you absent than anyone else present. Honest, Adam, I understand. Maybe, maybe sometime. No, no, no promises. I'd rather have no illusions than broken promises. All right? Ken heard you speak last Tuesday. Oh? Yeah, said you were wonderful. Said you made a lot of sense. So? Said you mentioned your work with the Vietnam veterans. Are you a little disappointed in me boasting? Are you a little disappointed in yourself? Well, Seth Needham, you know, one of my partners, said he thought I should mention it, you know, in passing. I think you are a little disappointed in me. I have no objectivity about you at all, sir. None. Probably destroy me in the end. Want to see the bedroom? Mrs. Warner, thank you for inviting me. I admire Vlamic very much. He also frightens me. Oh? I mean, uh... His work is so lonely, so... I'm jabbering. Just jabbering. Nervous? Uh, yes. Mrs. Warner, I... Me too. I thought we'd have tea on the terrace. Adam doesn't know that I've invited you here. I just wanted us to talk. You must love Adam very much. It's a wonderful thing to love that way. 
It gives a sometimes chaotic existence focus. Cream? Sugar? No. That's why I asked to see you. I think you must be the most civilized person I've ever met. <laughs> I suspect it's easy to be civilized when one is examining the past. Is it the past? Very past. I want you to know, Mrs. Warner, that neither of us planned to... Oh, damn. What a wary cliche. I haven't run into an original triangle yet, have you? No. I think I fell in love with Adam the first time I saw him. We both had the same friends, went to the same parties. In our rarefied circle, it was inevitable that we would get married. Oh, don't misunderstand me, though. I still remember adoring Adam. And I think he still remembers adoring me. But people change, don't they? Yes. I feel brand new. You see, I'm very much in love myself. Oh, don't look so startled. It can happen to the faithful wife. Did I look startled? You did. I was going to get the divorce immediately, but for Adam's sake, I decided to wait until after the election. It seems to be a close one. A divorce now could seriously hurt his chances, especially with some of his hardcore supporters. So for his sake, I decided to delay it. Oh, but forgive me, is that agreeable with you? You're more than accommodating, Mrs. Warner. Jennifer. Just one favor, please. Let me release Adam. Let me let go. All right? Of course. They are still trying for the perfect poster. This one looks like a toothpaste ad. <laughs> Adam, it's you. That's what troubles me. Drink. Mm -hmm. I thought the evening went very well. Charity and politics. The ultimate couple. Cynical. Not cynical, Mary Beth. I mean, charity is the final debasement of society. And politics, well, surely the quintessence of sham. So, charity and politics. God's double barreled answer to progress. Thank heavens you don't talk this way in public. But I do. <laughs> it's just so couched in middle-class rhetoric that people actually think I'm a safe candidate. But you are safe. Mary Beth, you are not being kind. <laughs> Adam, I'm for you, even more than you are. Adam, you still find me attractive, don't you? You and Jennifer Parker, I've known about it for some time. Mary Beth, I... Please, Adam, let me finish. I know that our relationship has not been everything... well, that we hoped it would be. Perhaps I've not been as good a wife as I should have been. But I'm sure we'll both agree that 
emotionally were all run out. Nothing that happened is your fault. Please, Adam. This is very embarrassing for me. You know that I admire you far too much to ever hurt you. Despite your liberal meanderings from time to time, I believe you have a brilliant political future. Our association is obviously making you miserable. If Jennifer Parker can make you happy, Adam, and make you politically productive, I want you to have her. What about you? I'll be fine. Don't worry about me. I have plans. Very nice plans, actually. I think you'd approve. We'll talk about them one day. Well, after all, I am a constituent. Oh, Adam, don't look so stricken. What I'm doing is the best thing for everybody. It's even good for me. How about that? There are no villains, no losers. Everybody wins. You're remarkable. My dearest Adam, I will always be your best friend. Always. Do you know how long it's been since you held me in your arms? You wouldn't have to say you loved me. But would you? Would you like to hold me one more time and make love to me? You want to make love now? Even sooner. <laughs> oh, Adam, come on. If sex were everything, we'd be the happiest kids in town. So what do you say, Senator? Hmm? How about it? For one last night, Let's forget about marriage and remember affection. And Adam, the room is paid for. Let's go. This place is surreal. You've come a long way in three months, Counselor. We have an office bursting with business. The cabs tend to evaporate at this hour. The bus goes right by our office. Bus? You just landed another sweet, juicy case. You're taking us out of the bus business. Oh, look at this view. Our next office is here, OK? District Attorney Robert DeSalva, running hard for the U.S. Senate, claimed that a wave of greedy young lawyers is washing over our court system using methods that are abhorrent Enough to... Enough already. Well, he did everything but name me now, as wait, one of the... Calm down. This hustler's just running for office. Last week, he claimed that Adam Warner was soft on organized crime. Come on. I think it's important that Adam get to the Senate. For who? And last night, there was a package at my apartment. But later, pal. Tell me about your admirers later. Come on, let's get a cab. Here I am, as requested. Thank you. You could have come to the apartment, Adam. I know it. I have no secrets from you. 
No secrets at all. I've been coming down here since I was a kid. I never get tired of it. When I'm in the city, I sometimes start my jogging right here. I think, in a way, it's the loneliest place in New York. Lonely people like lonely places. You know, the East River isn't a river at all, Jennifer. It's a channel. Did you know that? No. I mean, it doesn't start out like a river. It has no mouth, no basin. I don't know. It's just not a river. I believe you. Mary Beth is pregnant. You? Yes. Oh. What uh, questions am I supposed to ask? Kind of ridiculous. Like, do you still sleep with your wife? Been unfaithful to me? I mean, it's bizarre. I, I don't even have the right. You have every right. I've been faithful to you. Jennifer, you break my heart. There's a, no one else in all the world that I love, Adam. And I, you. I know it sounds ludicrous after what I told you, but it's true. I think maybe it is true. But it doesn't mean anything. Mary Beth and I came home one night, both a little drunk. The subject was you. It was. We were talking about divorce and friendship and all good things for all of us. It was a healthy conversation. Oh, I'll bet it was. Please, Jennifer, don't. It's bad enough. Bad enough? What a childish expression from a grown-up man. Oh, I'm sorry, Adam. I'm hurting terribly. Jen? Please don't. Don't! Mary Beth is not going to be difficult. It's just that she doesn't want to do anything now during the campaign. The pregnant wife of an oncoming candidate deserted? It would be fatal. Her words are yours. Jennifer, it just means waiting. There will be other elections. And others, and others. Mary Beth intends for you to be president one day. She does. And she intends to be Mrs. Adam Warner forever. An active Mrs. Warner. So it's over, Adam. No. I love you, but go home. You have a wife, a child on the way, and an extraordinary... It means nothing. <gasps> if it meant nothing, this conversation wouldn't be taking place. Adam, dear Adam, you have a wife, a real working wife. She's brilliant. She took me. She rolled all over me. And that's, that's good. Good for a senator's wife. Hold on to her.
come back. What happened? Some misbegotten cretin. Hit and run. But he missed most of you. Did they get his license? No. Someone thinks they can describe the car, but it was dark. Mm. They'll never find him. You. Out. This young lady's got a rest. But I'm family. Out. I'll be back tomorrow, darling, okay? And tomorrow. And tomorrow. And tomorrow. I'll be out of here tomorrow. Not tomorrow, young lady. What's the big deal, nurse? Miss Parker doesn't seem to be married. So? Are you her? I'm her partner. Whatever you say. Dr. Goodman wants to see the next of kin. Are you at least that? At least that? What's the problem? Your... your partner almost had a miscarriage. Jennifer's pregnant? Let's go see Dr. Goodman. 